Hey everybody, this is Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Last time we went over the else if statement, which gives you the ability to run a second test if a first test is not true inside of an if statement. Let me give you an example from a Unix, a good Unix example. Say for example you have a cleanup program that goes through a certain directory and two things you want to do. One, if a file is over 365 days old in this directory, then you delete it because you're not supposed to have files that old in, in this directory. However, if a file is greater than 5 meg, then you want to compress the file to save space in, on the file system. So for each file, you have to test two things. So you would have to test, is the file greater than 365 days? If it is, delete it. Else, if the file is greater than 5 meg, then compress it. So there's a very good example of how you'd use an else if. Now one thing you can do at the end of an if then else if construct is throw an else statement at the end and usually when you do something like that it's for if somebody enters invalid data or for performing a default action let me give you an example of invalid data say for example you wrote a program that asked somebody for their astrological sign and what you would do is you would say if it's Pisces then print one horoscope else if it's Gemini, then print another horoscope. Else, if it's Libra, then print another horoscope, so on and so forth. Well, if somebody enters that their astrological sign is T Rex, then we want to print an error message. So at the end of all those else if is, else ifs, you would say, okay, none of the astrological signs were met, so let's print an error message that says, you entered such and such a value this is not a valid astrological sign and then you would say print valid choices and tell them to rerun the program so it's very good for error catching and it's also good for testing for special conditions and if those special conditions aren't met then perform a default action and that's what we're going to be doing with this example in this example we're going to buy a bus ticket and if the person is under four years old then they get to ride for free. If the person is f a senior citizen, 55 or more, then they get to go at half price. Otherwise, make them pay regular price. So it, look, it would look something like if age is less than five, then price is free. Else, if age is greater than 54, then price is half price. Else, price is the standard price. So let's get started. As always, pound exclamation point slash bin slash ksh, name of the program, what this program does. This program demonstrates the use of else at the end of an else if statement. And the co who wrote the program. So we're going to go buy a bus ticket. And what we're going to do is prompt the user to enter their age, which we do with the print dash n statement, enter your age, and once again, the dash n does not put a carriage return at the end of the print statement, which is normally what happens when you have a print statement. And we do that because we want the prompt to remain right at the end of the printed statement then we read in their response with the read statement and we store the value in the variable called age. Okay, so we test to see if the age is less than 5. If it is less than 5, then we execute this block of code all the way up until the else if statement and that just says that the ticket cost is free. However, if the age is not less than 5, 
then let's run a second test. And we do that with the else if. And we say age is greater than 54. If it is, then they're a senior citizen. And their ticket is half price, so it's $1. And if you notice, there is a backslash in front of the dollar sign. Because if you remember, the dollar sign normally means do variable substitution. So if we want to say a normal dollar sign, instead of saying variable substitution, we have to put a backslash in front. Otherwise, what will happen is corn shell will try to find a variable named 1 and try to get the value from it and plop it in right where it sees dollar sign 1. By putting the backslash in front, it takes a special meaning away from the dollar sign, which is normally variable substitution. So if you printed out ticket cost, it would show dollar sign 1. Okay, so we know the person. So, excuse me. If the person is not less than 5 years old and is not greater than 54, then we want to make the person pay normal price. So we assign, excuse me, so we go to the else portion which says normal price. Ticket price is two dollars and we go down to below the phi. Once again, this pro the if statement, the way this is constructed, the first test that comes out true gets executed, the code associated with it gets executed, and then we drop down to below the phi statement. So only so once it finds a true test, it executes that block code, then exit out below the phi statement. If it doesn't find any true block of code, then it goes to the else and performs the action that is inside the block of code between the else and the phi. And after that, we just go out and print the cost of the ticket. Okay, let's run this. Okay, so we make the program executable with the change mod user plus execute and the name of the program. And now we just run the program. Enter your age. I'm going to enter three, so it should pick up the first test. It does, and the cost is free. Let's run this program again. Let's actually clear the screen. And let's run the program again. And we'll make the person a senior citizen, 75 years old. They get half price, $1. Now, let's run it again, and we'll enter an age that's not too young and not too old. And we'll choose 24. And the cost was 2. So first thing it did, it checked to see whether the person was under 5. It wasn't, so it went to the else if. And it ran that test. It saw that the person was not over 54. So then it defaulted to what was in the else statement. So once again, two very good uses of the else at the end of an else if construct are to catch for errors. So if somebody enters an invalid input, then you can write a little error message that says, hey, this, uh, this is what you entered. It's not valid. Here are your valid choices. Please rerun this program, enter one of the valid choices. Or you can, what you can do is you can set up your if then else if construct to test for special conditions and if those special conditions aren't met then perform a default action and the special conditions in this program were if the person's under five then they get to go free if they're not are they over 54 if they're over 54 they get half price otherwise make them pay normal price